Now, before you use the CTX 3030's features like waypoints, uh, find points, and geo hunts, you have to enable the GPS system. To do that, we press menu and then scroll across to options, scroll down to GPS and press the menu button. Now the first, first option there is the GPS. Now if you press it once, you'll switch on GPS and that's the standard GPS system. Uh, if you press it a second time, you go into enhanced. Now I prefer enhanced um, in this country. So um, that's what we're gonna select. Okay, press the detect button. Now, up in the top corner here, you'll see there's a little satellite flashing. Now, once that satellite stops flashing and it stays solid, then you know that um, it has acquired a GPS reading. There we go, all done. Press the detect button and the CTX 3030 is now GPS enabled and we're ready to search and record exactly what we're doing. So that's it, great feature, let's get going. So now I've shown you all the basics about Exchange 2 software. I've shown you how to use the CTX 3030 and all the functions, menus, etc. Let's really put it all together now. And I want to show you how I use all of this to find myself a lot more stuff. Now, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explore the Google Maps within the Exchange 2 software. I'm going to find an area I want to search and then I'm going to drag a waypoint onto that that, that area, and then we're gonna go metal detecting and we're gonna to walk to that spot and search and see if we can find something. So first of all, what I do is I, I literally drag the Google Maps menu looking around and I'm looking for areas like this, which is a, probably a, a pit or something. But we'll keep dragging around, keep dragging around. And uh, there's, there's a, an interesting crop mark there, a circular mark. I zoom in slightly. There's what we call a ring ditch. Now these ring ditches are prehistoric houses. Um, some of them are stone age where with no metal finds, but the, if you're really lucky, you can find one from the iron age period where there's lots of things, including coins. So this is where we're gonna search. So all I do is literally drag the waypoint into the center of the ring ditch. It's then prompting me to save it into a collection. And this opens up the waypoint menu. And I let's simply type in, and we're gonna call this a ring ditch question mark okay now I can add a description but I'm, I don't need to in this case and save now it's time to connect the CTX 3030 to the computer so we can transfer that waypoint so we plug the USB lead into the computer on one end we undo the waterproof cap and connect the USB lead to the CTX 3030 and then we switch on the detector now, once the connection is made, you'll get confirmation and you'll see the CTX 3030 will appear just above the all on the left hand red pane. Now, simply find the waypoint that we actually saved in that collection and drag it onto the CTX 3030 icon and you'll get confirmation that the upload has been successful. And once that's all done, you simply unplug the USB lead from the back of the pod of the CTX 3030. The detector then updates. So just to recap exactly what I've just done. While looking at Google Maps, which is within Exchange 2 software, I've seen an area that I'm very interested in and I want to go search. So I've dragged the waypoint tool onto the middle of that area. I've then named the waypoint, I've connected the USB lead to the CTX 3030 and I've uploaded the waypoint onto the detector. So everything that I've done on Exchange 2 is now in the detector. I can now go to the field, switch on the metal detector, load that waypoint and walk straight to that point. So here we are at the field. 
and the, the very first thing I need to do is to put the new program in that I downloaded off the internet. The settings are automatically uh, loaded once you actually put them on the detector, but the, the mode we need to add. So we press menu and we go down from modes, past coins, beach, relic, silver, high trash, and there's our tadpole program that we downloaded and put onto this detector. So we click the menu button, select it, and that's it, it's all fully loaded. And the next thing we need to do is to switch on the GPS feature. So quickly go across to options, down to GPS, and then select GPS, go from off to on. We need to add a little widget on the displays so that we can actually see how far away we are to that, that waypoint that we loaded. So I'm gonna go down to the map screen and navigation tool, there it is. I wanna put a little tick in the box and you do that with a menu button. Let's come back to the detect screen and we'll do the same there. Tick the box, switch the navigation tool on. So we go across to the geo store, scroll down to waypoint and the first option is called distance. So we click distance and uh, this brings up all the waypoints we've got in there. We select the waypoint that we want, which is the ring ditch question mark. And then we press the menu button and the very first of those selections is called go to. So we click go to and there we are. We're back onto the map and the little widget tool says, it. wow, so we've got a long walk to go. Uh, couple more things we're going to do uh, on the map screen we're going to add the view geo trail and before we set off just just so we can start this geo hunt we're now going to press and hold the store button and press record so now those last two things that we did we did the view geo trail and that what that is everywhere I walk now there'll be like a uh, breadcrumbs behind me so I'll be able to see every part of the actual land that I cover and the record geo hunt means that when I get home I can do the everything that we do today I can load it on a computer so I can see exactly where I've been where I found things and you know that's very useful because sometimes you might miss somewhere and you'll be able to see that and that could be very important so that's it the detectors all up and running okay so let's get detected Okay, that's zero, so we're right on the spot and the ditch is all around us. So let's start detecting. Okay, found something. Okay, this is really interesting. This, is, this looks like it's a, a face, a human head. So uh, definitely one worth actually recording the fine spot. So now I press the GeoStore button and it's uh, FP001. Now one of the things that I like doing is put them in a bag and record it directly to the actual fine point. So this is um, this is FP01. So what I'm going to do is right on here FP001 and uh, I reckon this could be Iron Age. This, this actually could be something really interesting. So anyway, so that's then pop it in a bag. Now that's all I have to do because obviously I've recorded the actual fine point on the detector and that's going to have the grid reference and everything. So as long as I can tie up in the bag exactly what it is, then job done. Do a hole carefully.
Well, that looks like something. That looks like the horns off of something. Fine point zero zero six. Okay, let's save. That's a good hunt. I've uh, got six interesting finds. Uh, one of them is very, very interesting. That's the the, the coin the. The, the face that I found first of all. Uh, this, these weird rings, I've, had, I've found three of these weird like rings. Um, anyway, I want to get home and clean all these up and, and actually see what they are. Uh, but it's a successful hunt. I mean, we saw um, the crop mark on the field, we walked to the spot and we've got six items. So uh, they might not be Iron Age, but um, definitely one of them definitely does look it. Now, before we actually switch the detector off, we must remember to, to end our geo hunt. So you press and hold the store button and then move down to stop and then press the menu button. And it will actually come up and say uh, geo hunt saved and we've saved it. So that's it. Let's get home and clean these finds. Now this is the first thing I found. It's actually, it's actually a, a small face. Now in the past, a lot of these faces turned out to be medieval, like um, studs, but this is definitely something more, more substantial. This is a lot, a lot more heavy duty. Um, I'm, I'm reasonably happy that this could be Iron Age. The second object was, a, was again, something that looks old. But I don't recognise it. It'd be nice if some of these bits fit together. Again, I look at how thick the patina is. I mean, the field is 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 a clay field, and it's it's not very good condition. But looking at that, I would have if I'd have found that anywhere, I'd have said that looks like Bronze Age. The, the whole patina and everything looks like Bronze Age. Um, but um, so that's two nice pieces. Now the, the third piece was even more 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 recognisable. I'm pretty sure that these are that's that's a fragment of a a, a bovine or a cow um, bucket mount. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. I've seen these before, and so so thinking about it, all these could be from say an Iron Age bucket and then the plows come along and smashed all the bits up. And again, the patina is really old. You can tell it's like, the patina is the coating to the metal and it's really thick. And then the plows come along and it's damaged it. So, but you can tell, you can't, you don't get this on sort of modern stuff. This is like thousands of years of, of patination. And as you can see, that would have been a loop from the top of the bucket and that's the one horn, that's another horn. And the bit that's broken off is the, the, the lower part of the actual face of the cow. Um, but I'll do some research and hopefully we'll be able to find a, a close parallel to this. But a really important find. So you can see the damage that the plow does to these. Um, it's a real serious damage, especially this one. This is, this is probably the worst of the lot. Uh, this one's obviously been rolling around and the trouble with clay is that, that some years the clay goes absolutely rock solid. When the plough turns this over, it's literally tearing it through a rock hard pieces of, of, of clay. And there's all sorts of damage gets done. But there you go. And the last bit, which I don't think, I think it's just a piece of lead, but because it was on that area, I better just have a quick look. Mm 
Yeah, that's just a piece of lead. So that's it. Six good finds, one bad find. And basically the only reason that I found these was because I saw a small area in the field where there was a ring ditch. And I went to that exact spot and found all this stuff. Now I've detected those fields for years and basically I just tend to walk around and not find anything. So the CTX 3030 and the, and the actual waypoint feature, being able to drag that onto the map and then walk to that spot is one hell of a feature. As you can see, it has helped me find six, well, I think they're all gonna be Iron Age artifacts. Brilliant. And of course, the last thing to do is to get it onto a PC, work out exactly where I've walked to make sure I've covered all the area and to see if there's any patterns of where those finds have come from. And as you can see, they've all started off in the center there and slowly worked down the hill. Um, so next year, I just load those fine points into my CTX 3030 and I walk back there and see if anything else has been ripped from the subsoil and is laying on the surface.